And we made it. We're back. It's Wednesday, 3 o'clock. Do you see the tree behind me? It's all bloomed. It's beautiful. We're outside, guys. Yesterday was so beautiful, Blue Ridge. The sun was shining. It felt so good. And guess what? This Sunday, we're doing a craft festival at Blue Ridge Winery. The weather's supposed to be great. Set a Sunday, right? Sunday. This Sunday. There's how many crafters are coming out? Do we know? 30 some odd crafters will be here this Sunday and they're going to be set up all over. They're going to be in the grand tent, out in the front parking lot, on the deck, over the vineyard room. So you can walk around and experience the most unbelievable, beautiful craft fair ever while you have a glass of wine in your hand. And guess who's here? Peggy's here. We love you, Peggy, right? <laughs> I love that. Oh, yo, Mary Wayne. Good to see you, Mary Wayne. How are you? I love you. It's awesome to be outside. It's kind of neat. Ken's back. I love it, Ken. Good to see you, dude. And Sally's over here. We all love Sally. Oh my God, right? We love you, Sally. And, uh, so today we're going to do two videos. I got one that I'm, like, I'm going to present for y'all. I hope you love it. And Tyler's back. You know, Tyler Conklin, he's the young man that was in that motorcycle accident three years ago. And man, he's got a great presentation. His, he, he's trying to add value to the world. He's writing things out and he sends it to me. He goes, man, can I do it again? Can, can I go live? Can we make a podcast? Goes, man, I want to support you, dude. So I hope you all love this. Hope you love it. It's fun stuff. The title of it is this. Everyone is becoming something. It's true. Susan, I see you. What's happening, Susan? Everyone's becoming something. As the days are passing by, we are becoming more of something and less of other things, right? Paula, what's happening, Paula? Good to see you. I always love your hello. Hello. Right? Love the hearts. I love that, guys. Ken, Sally rocks. And Ken said that, Sally. Right? I love that. Sally does rock. It's awesome. So who in this world would ever want to try to build on their weaknesses? You ever hear that? Some people go, yeah, I want to, I want to get better at a week at, but they forget about their strengths. And what they're really saying is, I want to become more of what I'm weak at. <laughs> it's not right logic. This is why I always say we should build on our strengths and forget about our weaknesses. Because who would ever want to become more of what you're weak at? I mean, we're born with gifts on purpose with a purpose. And it's our job to use those gifts to add value to the world around us. That's it. You know, I use this as concept for winemaking. So here at the winery, all the best wines at Blue Ridge, I think, how can I beat that wine? Because if, I, if we make a wine and it's not performing well, it's not selling well, well, if the guests don't like it, guess who else doesn't like it? Randy doesn't like it. So, so if people aren't buying it, it's not good. Let it go. Let it fall off the menu. Build on the best. Tammy, what's happening, Tammy? I can't wait till summertime. You're back, Tammy. You're going to be a server. Oh, my God. Good to see you, Tammy. But, you know, build on your strengths. Forget about your weaknesses. You know, in winemaking, so our wine called Delicious Sweet Red is an improvement on Sunshine Red. The next time you're at the winery, taste those back to back and you'll go, oh yeah, it's very similar. But Delicious Sweet Red is more of everything. And the moment we improved on Sunshine Red, which was, which was the top sweet selling wine, now Delicious Sweet Red beats Sunshine Red every day of the week. Improve on the best and forget about the worst. We, we, if we apply this to our life, we will be more successful in every area. Now, if we're going to play to our strengths, it's, it's going to take some confidence, okay? We're going to have to get real with ourselves. We're going to have to acknowledge what we're good at and what we're bad at. And this can be a challenge at times because sometimes you don't want to face what you're bad at. You know what I mean? But we, and not just, we, don't, we don't just have to face it to ourselves, but to other people around us. Right? Betsy. I see you, Betsy. What's going on? How are you? Heather. I love it, Heather. Good to see you, Heather. It was fun to see you the other day. I was, I was in Wind Gap. It was great to see you. Angie's here. Angie's there. I love it, Angie. Good to see you, Angie. Angie was out walking the vineyards the other day. It was so neat to see you, Angie. Oh my God. Marilyn Monroe's got a quote on this. She says, I used to get the feeling, and sometimes I still get it, that sometimes I was fooling somebody. I don't know who it may be. Maybe it was myself. And she's getting at the point that like, are you being someone that you're not supposed to be? Are you trying to impersonate? Are you building on your, are you trying to improve your weaknesses or are you just being the authentic, strong you that you're born to be and playing to your strengths? I got to tell you guys, if you're a boss or you're a manager or you're a leader, you gain unbelievable credibility and confidence when you stand in front of the group and say, this is what I'm good at and this is what I'm bad at. <laughs> Fill in my gaps. Because if you're someone that's pretending to be good at everything, <laughs> People know. <laughs> you can't fool them. <laughs> they know. So you might as well just say it out loud. And just like that, they'll see you as courageous. But you'll see yourself as being vulnerable. You see, the two are the same thing looking through the different, different perspectives, right? I think the real issue with this whole topic we're talking about has to do with the word shame. Shame's the real problem, isn't it? I wrote this last night laying in bed, guys. I thought, you know, the real issue behind this is actually shame. Look at Ken. Amen. I'm with you, Ken. <laughs> 
You know, shame has the power to make everything superficial. Shame has the power to make everything fake around us. It causes people to, to be someone else. They put up these walls and they fake it. They're trying to fake it till they make it. Meanwhile, we should face it till we make it. You with me on that? Shame causes more people to sit down at the game of life than anything else. Shame is the wall that we all got to climb. I look at shame like a cloak that people wear in the hopes that other people will approve of them because they got a cloak on and they can't see that part of them. You ever study Brene Brown? She, she's, she, Brene Brown is a shame researcher. Hi, Denise. How are you? I see you. What's going on? Brene Brown puts it the best. She goes, shame is the fear of disconnection. And I love that. It's so true. Shame is the fear of disconnection. In other words, what is it about me that if you knew this, you might not like me so much. So therefore, I hide that from you so you don't see it. And then all of a sudden, I live within my own prison of shame. The whole key to absolute freedom in life is to expose every weakness you have to the world around you. Because only through honesty and transparency can we actually get better. It's the old saying, how can you improve on something you don't understand? If you want to make a car better, you got to understand how that engine works. Then you can improve it. And it's the same with us. And shame is a big wall, right? So build on the strengths. When we focus on our strengths, we will grow faster than if we try to improve our weaknesses. True statement, right? Plus, people that use their strengths, I think they're happier people. They're less stressed and they're more confident at everything they're doing because it's their strength zone. It's what they're born to do. Imagine, imagine getting up and, and being paid for simply who you are. Well, that's what happens when you live in your strength zone and you build in your strengths and not your weaknesses. And we're just, we're just being the authentic version of who we are. And by the way, people are going to hate it. <laughs> My name is Randy. I get hate mail sometimes. <laughs> it's all good though, because when you're having an impact on the world around you, some people won't like it. That's okay though. Be authentic you. So what comes easy? That's the question we should ask. Yo, Nathaniel, man. Do you know that tomorrow's Nathaniel's birthday? He turns... <laughs> Nathaniel turns 21 tomorrow. <laughs> Look at Sally. <laughs> tomorrow. He's 21 tomorrow. We have such big plans. <laughs> it's so big. I can't say anything. <laughs> So, I love that guy. So, Nathaniel, our head winemaker, he turns 21 tomorrow, guys, and he has been our head winemaker for years. So, for years, he comes running to me with a glass of wine, and he goes, Randy, is it good? What do you think? Is it good? He's finally going to be able to taste the wine tomorrow. And guys, people joke with me, they go, no, he's tasted it. Guys, Nathaniel is authentic and pure to the core. That guy has never had wine. Guaranteed. I know that, young man. He is t to the core. So... What are you good at? That's the question we ask ourselves. What are we good at in life? What are we good at? What do you do naturally that's better than everyone, everyone else? Are you good with kids? Then work with kids. Are you good at math? Do math. Are you good at comforting others? Find a way to add value to the world. Are you good at building things like my little boy Joseph? Man, that little man, I never knew he had a talent for building things until we started building a, a fort in the backyard. All of a sudden, Joseph came alive. He's got the drill and the bits. And I'm like, who taught you to do this, young little man? He, he's so good at it. He has a talent for creating things, right? And but creativity, Maggie, baby, my little girl, Maggie, Maggie, Maggie is so, right? Look at <laughs> Maggie. But, I mean, Maggie is so creative. I mean, she'll weave scarves together, come down and sell the scarves, use all that money to buy more scarves and do it again. That girl is so creative. Holy cow, right? Are you outgoing and dramatic? Are you an actor? Like my little girl, Natalie, man, she's an actor. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so good. Are you steady under pressure? Are you good at record keeping like my wife, right? Tips great at, great at record keeping, organization, things like that. So here's mine. Here, here's my, the thing, the couple things that I'm good at, and this is all I do. I build on my strengths and I forget about my weaknesses because Sally fills in the gaps. <laughs> you do, you do, you do, Sally, you do. So here it is. I'm good at verbal communication. I work on it daily. Every day I try to improve my verbal communication and I use that, that, that talent to set the vision for Blue Ridge. Okay. And that's my number two, the vision. My, one of my, one of my big things in life is I love to create a grand vision for the future that we all can be moving towards. This way, what we do is, is we, we can have our cake off in the distance, but we eat it along the way as we, as we're getting closer to it, right? You ever hear the saying, you can have your cake and eat it at the same time? You can't have your cake and eat it too? Well, you can by pointing off the distance, but living in the day. And that's what we do. I always try to, here's where, this is where we're going, guys. But then you also have the confidence to go, I was pointing the wrong way. We're actually going over this way. And we change direction, right? Everyone knows that. Sally knows. We, we change direction all the time. And guess what? It's because, you know, when you set a vision, you set up for a path, you may think you're right today, but then you have the confidence to change your course, change direction, right? 
the ins inspiration. I love to inspire people. I'm all about it. We have a wine called inspiration. You know, I really believe inspiration is oxygen to our soul. And the more people that I can inspire, guess who becomes inspired along the way? <laughs> Randy. You cannot give what you don't have. And the more you inspire, the more inspired you become. So that's my, my third thing that I do in life is I inspire. And the last one is I like to create new things. If you look at my life, Sally knows me really well. I just create things. I love to cr bring new things into existence that have never existed before, right? How can you do something? And my mom would say to me, Randy, if you can think it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. And that's true. I mean, our chandeliers here, the big trees in the room, that, it's proof. If you can think it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. So I create things like books. I'll write books. I'll, I'll turn trees into chandeliers. I build buildings, new wines, right? The experiences, the underground experience. No one's ever done that before. Create new things. What's happening? Raymond, I see you. I see you, man. What's going on? So the question we all need to answer is this. What gifts was I born with that I can use to make the world a better place? And the moment we answer that question, and then we use all of our strengths to move in that direction, Man, you, you will never feel bored. You'll never feel lost. You'll never feel unmotivated. You'll be enthusiastic because you're actually doing what you were born to do. Hope you love it. Fun, right? What do you think? So I'm going to turn the camera off and then we're going to turn it back on in one second and you're going to see Tyler will be here. I love the hearts. Thanks, guys. Thanks for the hearts. And join us this coming Sunday at the winery craft fair at Blue Ridge. It's going to be spectacular. I can't wait for it, guys. I love y'all. Thanks, Michael. I love you, dude. Can't wait to see you guys. Michael hold the record for the most undergrounds ever. Mike, man, how many has it been? Like, I don't know, 17, 18? Always loving you there, dude. I love it. See you guys. Bye, y'all. I love you guys. See you, Susan. Bye.